Hey and good morning Facebook Live. We're live here from Victor Outreach Glasgow. We're here at our ministry house and um, yeah, I'm excited to be here with you guys this morning. It's a sunny, beautiful sunny Saturday morning. Hope you guys are all have some good weather where you're at. I know that really makes a big difference here. I'm really grateful for a little bit of sun. Um, this morning, my husband has really encouraged me to share a devotion with you guys. He's been doing these amazing devotions and I've been really encouraged by them. And I think many of you have as well. And uh, he's been trying to encourage me to come out and do one. So here I am, Saturday morning special. Let's go. <laughs> um, so this morning, um, I just pray that you'll be encouraged and be blessed by kind of the word that the Lord has placed in my heart. And I know that right now we're in a really, really strange season. Um, we found life as we knew it really swept from under our feet. The way things were going, people going to work, college, all those kind of things, everything has changed. And I know that for, for many, there's been different pros and there's been different cons. I know for us as a family, one of the benefits that we've seen in this season is that we've had a lot more real good quality time. Like for like the last five weeks, every evening, we've sat down for dinner together, which has never happened since we've been married and had kids. We've, we've never had like five weeks straight every night that we sit down for dinner together because, you know, we're always on the move and going different places. And that's been that quality time with each other has been really, really special. And we're really, really grateful for that. And there's been many other benefits that I know different people have experienced, whether it's been just time to reflect, time to read more, time to rest, time to reset different things in our lives. And I also know on the, on the flip side that there's been many difficulties to this season. There's the, we're in a time of isolation where people are going through loneliness, many people are going through sickness, grief, loss of loved ones, loss of family members and all those things that is so so difficult we're struck with fear where should, where should i go decisions that we have to make can i go to this place can i not go to this place and and all these different things are things that can shake our confidence in this time that we're in i know for us some days are great some days i feel like i'm on top of it with the kids our schoolwork is being done i've got structures in place and being effective in ministry and other days i'm just like ah and it just really all seems to overwhelm and you just wish you could get out and just do other things and so there's good days and there's bad days and it's a time when electronic devices are of huge importance to us and I know I'm so so grateful in this time for things like phones and Facebook and and WhatsApp groups and Zoom groups where we can meet together and we can still fellowship and we can still connect with each other. I love watching all the different services around the world and I think I've never ever watched so many different services on a Sunday because we're able to, because everybody's streaming them through Facebook Live, and that's such a huge blessing. Um, but with also, with all these devices and with all these things can come different dangers as well. We can find ourselves sometimes just scrolling through Facebook and we can find ourselves getting disheartened because you've maybe not had comments that you like, you've not had any, many comments to things you've posted or you've not had enough likes or, or you can still feel like, you know, you're looking at other people and they've got it all together. And it can be a time where we can become really disheartened through comparison and through the danger of comparison that comes through different social media devices. And even without comparing our, our, ourselves to other people like that, I think it can be a time where we're questioning, you know, am I really doing enough? Uh, you can feel, we can feel useless in this time where before we'd be going to work, we'd be out there. We feel like because we're doing, we're being effective and now we're being stuck and we're in a time of stillness. You, know, you can almost feel like, am I, am I even being effective? We can feel useless where we've maybe, you know, been put off for and furlough from work and we're at home and just a little bit lost with what it is that we should do with ourselves. And, and you know, obviously staying home, we're saving lives and it is really important to follow those different guidelines in the season. But it, it can be a time where we ask ourselves many different questions that just bring up uncertainty and insecurity within us. And we can go through different e emotions and the emotions of life where you're feeling like I'm a failing as a mom, I know. Uh, or a parent in this time, it can be hard. Am I doing the best I can do? Am I being a good school teacher? Am I helping my kids? Are they uh, furthering their education through the things that we're doing at home? And so, like I say, some days we're winning, some days we feel like we're losing. Um, and, and struggles with self-worth is something that I've struggled with personally from before I was saved and through definitely very strongly through the early years of my salvation where I felt like, am I enough? Am I doing enough? Am I being effective enough and on top of that the enemy comes with lies saying you know you're not, you're not enough you're useless you're just a burden um you know you're not a good enough mom you're not a good enough dad look at what that person's doing you're not doing that you're not clever you don't pray well enough even you know these lies can come up with us where we're sitting even as christians oh you don't read enough you don't study enough you don't understand enough 
and we can be piled in times where we have a lot more time with so many of these lies in our minds and in our in our hearts and it can be, end up being a season or a place in our lives where we almost feel powerless and no longer trust our own abilities but the truth is in that is that we can't always trust our own abilities and that in our own strength we can't really do anything and I don't know about you but even just knowing that takes a load off that in myself I don't have the strength in myself I don't have the ability but in Christ I can do all things in Christ I am victorious in Christ I am more than a conqueror and you know it is when we have Christ at the center then the, the standards of social media, the standards of the things that we see allows us no longer become or are the standard, but Christ must be the standard in his life. His righteousness, his holiness, his word, his truth. And it's a season where pondering, pondering and meditating, which is just taking time to let it flood over our minds, letting the word of God flood over our minds and be repeated is of such importance. When I think of the, the, the most transformation I ever experienced in my walk, it was in those early years when I was, I was just in the rehab home and every morning we would read the word of God and I used to have a, a list of scriptures that spoke about who I am in Christ. And I used just to, just to repeat them over and over and over. And then I remember I used to just read them. I would read them to myself in a mirror until the truth of God's word of who I was in Christ became the truth that I believed on the inside instead of so many of the lies that I was feeling from the outside of not being good enough, not being worthy enough, but that instead that I received a God confidence instead of my own lack of self-esteem and my, my self-value. And it's when we face these lies of the enemy that we need to combat it. We need to combat it with the word of God. And this morning I want to read a portion of scripture in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 to 6 from the message translation and it says, the word, the world is unprincipled. It's dog eat dog out there. The world doesn't fight fair and we don't live or fight our own battles that way. Never have and never will. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation, but they're for demolishing an entire massively corrupt culture. We use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. Our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of obedience into maturity. And how many know God's word is a sword? It is the sword of the spirit, it is living, it is active, it is powerful to take hold of every lie of the enemy and to pull it down onto the authority of Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus' authority, it says today that he has made you with a plan and with a purpose. That there are specific gifts and talents placed in your life and in my life that he wants to use, that he wants to bring out to reach a certain group of people that maybe only I'll be able to reach, maybe only you'll be able to reach. There are things that he has placed in your life that only you will be able to do by being genuinely who he has made you to be. Being real, being authentic, being yourself and being confident in the way that Christ has created you and who he has created you to be in him. I want you to know this morning that you have been created in his image. You are not a cheap carbon copy of anybody else. It does not matter how many likes you get on Facebook or how many followers you have on Instagram. What matters is the way that Christ thinks about you, the way that he sees you, that he has called you and has a plan and a purpose with your life. And he will bring that to pass as you seek him and as you seek his face and his word and proclaim his word over you and put on Christ every single day that we walk not in what I can do as a mom or what I can do as a wife, but it is Christ in me that enables me to do so much more than what I could ever do of my own self, of my own strength, or of my own ability. I want you to know this morning that you have been set apart and you have been destined for greatness and there is a calling of God upon your life this morning as a Christian and as a believer. And this morning, I just want to take a moment to speak. Is that all right? Can I speak this morning God's word over you? Because I don't know about you, but I need God's word spoken over me. I need to hear not the lies of the enemy that say it's not you're not good enough, you're not making it, you're, you're failing in this area. I need to hear God's word over my life because that is what gives me the confidence to be able to continue to walk and to function as he has purposed my life to be. This morning in Psalm 33, 
verse 20 to 22, it says, We put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us, Lord, for our hope is in you alone. Philippians 4 verse 13 is, well, one we all know very well, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do everything through him. 1 John 5 verse 14 says, and we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 says, so all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord and the Lord who is the spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed in his glorious image. Ephesians 3 verse 12 says, and in him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and with confidence. I love Hebrews 4 verse 16 that says, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And I don't know about you this morning, but to know that you've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, it has cleansed us of our sins, our faults and our failures. And that because of that, that we can freely and with confidence approach the throne of grace, approach the mercy seat of God, and we can find strength and we can find hope and we can find confidence there at his feet. It's such an amazing thing. And even as I've been reading these just now, I feel within me that life revives. How many know the the word of God is powerful. It revives us from the inside. It changes our thinking. It transforms the way we think, the way we see, and it directs us. The word is a lamp for our path and a light for our feet. Jeremiah 17, 7 says, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Galatians 2 verse 20 says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. And I feel encouraged as I've read these words and I pray this morning that you will receive the truth of God's word over you, that you can approach God freely and with confidence wherever you've come from, whatever you've been through, you can approach him freely through the blood of the lamb, through what he has done on the cross of Calvary and we can find peace and we can find rest in his presence and to know that that it is well it is well because Christ is on the throne and this morning I just want to share last thing I'm going to close with just a few lyrics is um I remember many many years ago I had a friend in ministry and she told me you know when you get to the end of your day and you put your head on the pillow just know that when you've done your best for God that day when you've done the best within your ability Things may have succeeded, things may have gone wrong, we may have failed at times, we may have succeeded at times. But when you've done your best before the throne of God, you put out your head on the pillow at the end of the day, that you can just rest in peace and you can rest in him, knowing that it is enough. That's enough. That when we've done our best and we've served him to the best of our ability, success or failure, that it is enough just to be in him and to be in Christ. And there's a song that has been really resonating in my spirit um this morning and, and i love it it's a, it's a song that it breaks me every time i hear it i'm not going to sing it for you this morning i know my husband likes to sing a little bit when he's on facebook live i'm not going to be singing for you this morning what i am going to do is i'm going to read a short portion of the lyrics and then after that i'm going to just post the youtube clip to this song and i pray that it's a blessing to your life that today is where you know we're mid-morning on a saturday morning and there's there's a whole day ahead of us that you can know that resting in him that you are enough for him and that he has made you enough. The way you talk, the way you are, he has made you perfectly. There was no mistake when he created you. And to rest in the fact that you are made right in him when we remain in him. And this lyric from the song, it's a Mercy Me song. And it says, I'm finding myself at a loss for words. And the funny thing is, it's okay. The last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you would say. Word of God speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness, 
word of God speak. And I'm just going to pray at this moment. And I'm like I said, I'm going to post a song in a minute. And I just pray that you can just take a moment and just let God's word flood over you and receive, receive who he is in you. Lord, this morning, I just thank you, Father, for your word, which is life and light and hope for everybody who receives it. And it is nourishment for our bodies and it brings health to us, Father. And I just pray this morning your blessing on every person that has been watching or who maybe watch later. Lord, I pray this morning, my God, the confidence of Christ within them, my God. Lord, that our own self-worth, our own insecurities would just be wiped away. The lies of the enemy this morning, we pull them down under the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I speak out this morning that you are more than enough in Christ Jesus. That in him you can move and live and have your being. Lord Jesus, that you would, you would increase in us, my God. That we would decrease and that you would increase your strength. Lord, I pray throughout today, God, that you would remind us as your children of the words that you have spoken over us. I pray today in the lives of your children, my God, that you would just bring up, bring up within us, Holy Spirit. Remind us of the word of God and what you have called us to be and who you have called us to be in you, Father. And that it would be bringing forth a strength and a confidence that is not of ourselves, but is of, is of the Holy Spirit and Christ in us, Father. I just pray a blessing over your people this morning, my God. Lord, I may pray that you would just be with everyone, whichever season, whatever place they're in today, good or bad, Lord God. Let your comfort and your grace be there, for your grace is sufficient in our weakness, Father. We love you this morning and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It has been um, a blessing and it has been a little bit nerve-wracking to be with you guys this morning, but I have really enjoyed it. Uh, I have been blessed. I pray that you have been blessed too. Tomorrow evening we'll be live with our Sunday night service here at Victory Outreach Glasgow at 6 p.m. So start a watch party. Feel free to join us. We would love for us to reach more people here up in Scotland. And we just want to see the word of God and the gospel of Christ going out in this time unrestricted and moving in power because the gospel is powerful. The word of God is powerful like we've been sharing this morning. So God bless. Have an amazing day. Have a great day wherever you are. Goodbye.